attendees are in listen only mode. Good afternoon everybody. Welcome to the webinar. Before we start the webinar, I'd like to introduce our expert today. It's Mr. Sanjay Anandram. He's a venture partner with Seed Fund. He has spent over two decades as an IT industry executive, an entrepreneur, a VC, and an advisor to early stage startups. He's a founding partner of Jump Startup, an early stage VC fund set up to invest in technology and technology enabled businesses that leveraged India. He brings significant international experience involving new business creation and business development in India, US, Asia, Middle East and Africa. Before I hand over the floor to Mr. Anandram, a few pointers to our audience. You will all be on mute. You can type in your questions in the panel provided. Over to you, Sanjay. Right. Thanks, Neha. Thanks very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. And uh, so what I'll do is for the next, uh, let's say, 20 odd minutes, uh, through the slides. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, actually talk to you about 10 important things you mind while starting out uh, in, in your own company. And uh, these are in no particular order, and these are all lessons and actions I have gleaned my 15 years of experience of working with startups and entrepreneurs. So uh, without further ado, let me just walk you with quickly through these things, and thereafter we will uh, take up questions. All right. Here's an important for buy out on yourself. How much money will you pay someone else's in your t-shirt and feel good about it? Think about the question. Does it, it at first blush it's this. It sounds weird, it sounds strange. Why would someone decide to someone else in their t shirt and feel good about it? I I'll, I'll address that. Or Framing the question differently, most of to life carrying touch the identity that's from someone else. So what is it? Market company, a marketing manager somewhere else, a chief technology office. So all these are titles, designations that are used to define wealth. On the other hand, I want to ask you just do it yourself. Don't use any other company's name. Don't use any title given to you by someone who to describe yourself. All of a sudden you realize it's not such an easy thing to answer. So if you want to do a small exercise for yourself, take a small piece of paper, write your name on it, and do that in maybe two, three words, can you describe yourself? Okay? Now, coming back to the early point, how much money will you pay to put someone else's name on your t-shirt and feel good about it? Think about how often in life we, we, we do stuff. We wear a Gucci t-shirt, Balachi glasses, you drive a Mercedes Benz. So these are all somebody else's names. And the only thing is, rather than they us wear their names on our t-shirt, we pay them great money to have the privilege of being their names on our t-shirt. So what does it imply and why am I talking about this? The reason I'm talking about this is that in entrepreneurship, the most important thing is to have a very, very strong degree of confidence and self-conviction. You are the brand, you believe in yourself. The role that you create is yours. You don't seek the support of someone else's name or someone else's title because you're going to walk away from all the lovely luxury and the trappings and comfort offered by the name of a big company. And all of a sudden, you are on your own, you're doing your own thing are only handing out your business card which has your name on it. 
the person you are going to try and meet is not meeting you because a senior executive with this big brand company he is meeting you because it is and that is a very very different thing a lot of people to deal with so that's your very own sense of self sense of identity the same person who would spend hours on you who would give you an appointment immediately suddenly queued and because he doesn't know your, your company or doesn't care much for fancy title because he's not known so dealing with all these things is very important but critical point is having a very very strong sense of self which means self confidence self conviction a belief in what you have to do and a desire to be able to go out and make your own road as opposed to walk self Moving on, this is a very important thing that I believe we all need to be extremely cognizant of. This is a very very old adage. The chemistry is not right. The arithmetic never. So first, we talked about confidence. Without people and think what kind of people you want to have. What kind of people do you want to be on your side as you travel? It's very hard, arduous, stressful, fun, filled, exciting road. Because at the end of the day, you are not doing this because of the money. Because the opportunity cost of being an entrepreneur is very high. You are doing this because a you really want to do it. You absolutely feel your bones. It's an unbelievable passion. And before you are doing people who share that vision, who share the value system, who share the passion, they have the same chemistry. So there's a DNA match. Because when you are down, down you are in the pictures, you are fighting every day, there is no money to meet fair, there is no sale happening, your number one person is trying to leave the company, competitive pressures are high, but you want people around you in what is being done and with whom bounce of ideas share uh, a joke, uh, let out steam and things of that nature. The genuine teamwork is very crucial. And the least of that is that therefore the kinds of people that you want to hire, the kinds of people you want to work with, right, have to be very carefully calibrated. You don't get, work with people because they agree with you. You work with people because they challenge you. And remember, loyalty and contents are not substitutes. They're not flexible. You can't replace one with the other. You don't want loyal people. You want people who are there because they respect you, they regard you. And vice versa. You want people who you can respect, not people who you can order around and uh, you know make them do stuff because you're a boss. They do stuff because A, they respect you, B, they believe in what is being done. So keep that aspect in mind because Teamwork very 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 crucial because no company ever anywhere has been built by one person. So first we talked about self confidence. Uh, then talking now about the importance of having the right kind of people around you, and realizing that having yes men isn't the right approach for building a great company. All right. That's a very important point. So the next slide. And this is a question that you need to ask yourself. Do I wish to own 100% of a one crore company or do I wish to own 1% of a 100 crore company? Remember, there is no right answer, there is no wrong answer, there is no good answer, there is no bad answer. This is something that strikes at the very core of who you are. And the, re and, and the objective of this whole, of, the, of this learning is it's measure of your vision, it's a measure of the kind of company you wish to build, it's a measure of the kind of management style that you would wish to employ. Because if you want to build a one crore company and own 100%, it implies that there isn't any space for anyone else to share in the equity. Because 100% of one crore and 1% 1 of 100 crore, the net value is the same. but the visions of building these companies are very different. A 100 crore company and you own 1% of that implies 
that there has to be a team, there has to be a sharing of the equity, the kinds of management processes, the scaling of the company, all of those start becoming crucial. So it's very important that you think through this and like I said earlier, there is no right or wrong, there is no good or bad, it's a direct function of your own vision, of your own desire. But be rest assured that either of these two paths when chosen will require very different kinds of mindsets in terms of company building, in terms of sharing, in terms of processes, in terms of governance, in terms of the strategies that you employ, in terms of capital required, etc. So it's very important that you spend adequate time worrying about this aspect too. Next, when the office ceiling leaks, do you bring a bucket to work? You know, it used to be that you know, there's a company called Yahoo, which was founded in 1994. And Yahoo, one of the big stories told of Yahoo was the extremely frugal nature of the founders and that culture percolated into the company and when there used to be rain or there would be a leak in the ceiling of the company, people were known to bring buckets to work. People would sleep in office, they would come with a sleeping bag, they would sleep below the desk because it was so exciting, it was 24 by 7 activity, very few people went home, they would bathe in the office, hang out in office and hence now you realize the importance of the chemistry being right because you don't want to hang out with people you don't like, uh, you can't uh, stand their value systems, etc. Very, very uh, important to be frugal so there's no fancy five-star culture, no fancy chefs, no fancy you know mas uh, massage tables, all of that comes much later after the company has been a big success. That's when you have expensive cafeterias, you've got uh, uh, you know, all kinds of fancy handouts to people, but only if you can afford it. But till such time as you can afford it, every dollar saved, every rupee saved is a rupee earned. It is better to spend that money on building a company than on fancy things like, you know, very expensive uh, Herman Miller chairs, uh, expensive uh, uh, works, workstations and things of that kind. So it betrays a kind of mindset. And you know the, some of the stories that were told in the early days of many companies, the joke used to be that if you found a goat, a goat tied to a piece of rope wandering around the lawns of a company, it meant that the founders did not want to spend money on a lawnmower or on a gardener. The goat was an easy, eco-friendly way of ensuring that the grass never grew, you know, beyond a point. So it betrays a mindset about how you think about the company. So the culture of frugality, a culture of having self-confidence, a culture of working with people with the right value systems, shared DNA, uh, you know, where people are there in the company because they are competent, not because they are loyal, right? People believe in a particular way of building a company. These are all very, very crucial learnings. Most companies collapse not because of anything else but because of internal problems and hence all of these are very important lessons in my experience that I think is worthwhile to share and worthwhile to uh, keep in mind. Next, and this shifts from within the company to moving outwards. The question, are you selling combs? for the bald, right? As is obvious, no bald person has a need for comb. So the question really is, what are you actually building? Is your service, is your product going to be of use to someone? Will someone pay good money to buy your product or service? Why will they pay good money? Why should they buy from you, right? So these are important questions. All too often we focus on building a comb without realizing that everybody around us is bald. And we end up designing a great comb with wonderful features, with different kinds of material, different kinds of color, different kinds of capabilities. 
right? The bottom line being always figure out starting from the market, what does this person want? Does this person have a requirement for this? What is the problem I'm solving? Is there a problem? Who is facing this problem? And only then do I go and design a solution. So I don't make a comb first and then look around trying to find people who would use it. And then find that everybody around me is in effect a bald person. I would actually first recommend that we first look around at the people around us, figure out who is experiencing what kind of a problem in what area, and then figure out what is the appropriate solution that needs to be built for this audience. Right? So it's a market backwards kind of approach as opposed to the uh, the, the uh, home for the bald. question, will you buy your own products? Right? That's an important thing to realize. All too often we build products because it's an imagined solution. The question is, will you pay good money to buy your own product or service? Why do you pay good money? What is the benefit to you? And we never ever personalize it because great solutions are only devised when the problems are experienced firsthand or they are observed firsthand. And it's very, very crucial that we understand that. So all around you will find great companies are built only by people who have either experienced a problem and therefore they realize, yes, if I had this kind of solution, it would be great. Or have a very, very close observer of a problem first hand so they know what the issues are and they know what needs to be done to be able to find solutions to the problem that they are uh, seeing or observing. Next. Does everybody in the company sell, sell and sell? Remember, nothing happens in any company sales happens. The most crucial thing in any company is sales. Without sales, nothing happens. So please internalize that. It is not technology, it is not uh, HR, it is not finance, it's nothing. It's except sales. In any company, 20 to 25% of a product or service relates to the R&D relates to uh, uh, general and administration. 70 to 70 percent of the costs go towards sales and marketing. So be very, very careful and think this piece through very carefully. And chief office in every company has to be CEO, particularly in the early days. You, and who are you selling to? You first have to sell to the co-founders and employees. What are you selling? You are selling your vision. You are selling your plea. You are selling how your solution is going to solve the problem. Then you are selling to investors. Raise money. Again, you are selling the team. You are selling the quality of the vision. You are selling the solution. Then you are selling to customers. You are selling to partners. You are selling to the broader market. There are analysts. There are consultants. There are media people. There are PR people. So you are talking to everybody. And in effect, each of these engagements, each of these interactions is nothing but a great opportunity for you to be able to tell your story in a convincing manner, in an ethical, honest manner. Your passion must essentially be driving that entire communication. Why do you believe that your solution is the best? Why should people want to use your product? And this entire culture has permeated. The greatest brand ambassadors are satisfied customers and you have to be able to sell a good product, a good service that fits, their, that, that, that addresses their problems. That's the only time they're going to talk about it. So it's very crucial that you think about these things and focus on sales because all too often we have scenarios 
where because of communication issues, because of general personality uh, factors, people don't wish to sell. So that's very important that one addresses these things. And very, very important that we ensure that everybody is in the culture of selling. Even your finance guy, when he goes out, when he goes home, he should speaking positively about that company. When he interacts with his peer group, with alumni members, he's talking about companies. So all of these are very, very important, right? So think about this carefully. Hello? Hello, Sanjay?
Hello. Hi, Sanjay. I think your internet uh, got disconnected, so we lost you. You're not connected to go to meeting. No, 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 no. We lost you when you were talking about uh, your last slide, the comb slide. When you were saying selling combs to the bulb, uh, we lost after that I think because you are not connected to go to meeting. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, just click on the link of the go to meeting mail that I had sent you. Yeah, uh, they want you, they People are saying that it uh, got disconnected after you talked about the whole company selling. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll start from there, okay? Okay, okay, you're back. So you can just show your screen. No, I think we lost you again. Uh, we lost you again. Can you please reconnect to the mail that I sent you? The last go to meeting mail. No, uh, your voice got muted as in even we couldn't hear you so I thought that you may get back but then out of after that you were just you're not visible on go to meeting so i thought you I might have been logged out Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. You can hear me? Can you see the screen now? Yes, we can see the screen. We can start the presentation. Okay, so, uh, so we, were, we were at this uh, selling combs for the ball, right? Yes. So, yes. so is this done? I, have, I don't know where I logged off. Uh, you, sorry, you logged off and does everyone sell, sell, sell? Okay, does everybody sell? Yeah. Okay, does everybody sell, sell? Okay. the whole company selling? Yes, yes. So, okay. do you want me to repeat that or should I move on to the one after that? Maybe you can repeat that. Okay. So, important thing here, uh, everybody sorry about the, uh, the, the problem with the internet. Uh, everybody needs to be a salesperson in the company. Nothing happens in a company until sales happens, right? Uh, 70 to 75 percent of the costs in a company relate to sales and marketing. So, be very, very conscious of that. So, everybody sells and what does that mean? You're selling to employees to be able to recruit the best people. You're selling your vision to them. You're selling the fact that there's great work going to be done. 
you're selling the fact that you're solving real problems that the solution is going to be incredibly unique and all of this is done and I don't mean selling in a negative unethical uh, snake oil salesman manner you're selling your vision effectively once you have employees then you need money so you're selling to your investors then you're selling to customers you're selling to partners you're selling to media people you're selling to analysts and consultants so everybody in the company must have the DNA of being sales oriented even a finance person when he goes out to industry meets goes to alumni groups uh, goes home should feel energized and charged about the great thing that they are doing in the company so don't ever underestimate the importance of being in a sales mode and again I, I reiterate when I say sales I don't mean this in a negative way or in an unethical manner selling is your vision your conviction your passion your belief so that's very very important that that gets highlighted moving on two poor guys don't equal one rich guy what does this mean this means that work with partners work with customers work with people who are bigger better and financially stronger than you are because that is the only way that you learn that's the only way you receive money and that's the only way you become stable working with another cash strapped resource starved startup is going to be incredibly stressful and two poor people or it's like two drowning people in the sea both of them will drown because each is trying to hold on to the other person and the other person is not strong enough to be able to support this additional load so find people that you can work with the larger companies larger uh, partners right who will help you become stable who will teach you things that you are not aware of who will show you management processes that will help you improve yourself and finally be able to write out checks that are useful for you to survive so keep that aspect in mind remember cash is king notwithstanding Akshay Kumar but it's very important to keep this in mind what does it mean have an eagle eye out on expenses be ruthless don't spend unless and until you have to don't spend ahead of sales don't spend based on random expectations oh great sales is going to happen oh therefore I'm going to build a great office I'm going to hire uh, these additional five guys uh, you know I'm going to have this fancy hardware installed in my company etc etc never build ahead unless there is great confidence and great belief that that sale is going to happen or some money is going to come in and frugality as a culture has to be ingrained in the company so focus on cash don't worry about profits don't worry um, don't worry about book profits don't worry about balance sheet all of these will happen later most important thing you have to worry about is your cash flow which is how much money is coming into the system how much money is exiting the system on a monthly basis on actual cash basis not on fictitious accounting not on expectations okay be ruthlessly uh, focused and be ruthlessly controlling about this particular aspect finally it's all very well because each one of us believes our company is the best we believe our company is solving world's problems we have the answer to world peace we have the answer to world hunger all of those nice things notwithstanding ask yourself the question apart from you who else shares this belief how many of your employees believe they are working on a life-changing mission how many people believe that their that their customers really believe that their solutions are extraordinary our customers really happy and the day you start believing your own PR the day you start believing your own PR is the beginning of the end of the company PR is for others to consume you must be stay grounded you have to continuously work all the time each and every day to ensure that what you are doing is actually solving somebody's problem and therefore that person is going to hug you with joy and say that man this is just fantastic you are the best right so never fall insanely in love with your own product others must fall in love with it they must believe you are the best you should not go around telling everybody you are the best okay so that's a mindset issue which means going out into the market seeking feedback making changes talking to people and getting their uh, guidance their advice right all of these things therefore start becoming very very important so very quick summary you starting off with 
your sense of self, your self-conviction, your belief, your vision about who you are, you're making your own road, that's your, that's your, your, your passion. Based on that, you're putting a team together where the chemistry is right, where you focus on competent, capable, high-capacity people, not yes-men who just keep saying yes to you and are loyal uh, uh, foot soldiers. You're looking at people who are wanting to build a big company and not be very control-oriented, not stay very um, uh, insular, people who are open to new governance, people who are open to sharing, people who are open to learning, etc. People who are building solutions to real problems, not just selling homes to bald people. People who have a culture of being frugal, who are focused on, on, on uh, ensuring that their um, uh, inflows are greater than cash outflows. Who, are, who believe in running a company frugally, not on just spending and ostentatious uh, behavior. People who are getting feedback continuously from a market, right? So these are all very, very important learnings that each one of us must have to be able to build a successful company. So thank you. Thank you so much, Sanjay, for that interesting session. We are open for Q&A. Thank you, Sanjay, for that interesting session. Uh, you can send in your questions by typing in the panel provider. Our first question is from Upasna. She asks, how much of your business plan should one reveal to a potential advisor, advertiser? How much of your business plan should you repeat? Should you reveal to an advertiser? A potential advertiser. Is that the question? Yes. Well, your business plan needs to be revealed to an advertiser. An advertiser is your customer, right? And advertiser is paying you money. So what is important from an advertiser standpoint is to understand how you are going to sell, who you will sell to, how many impressions or what kind of traffic or audience will you get, who the, tra who the target audience is, what is the mechanism for tracking success of the ad, right? All of these have to be shared. Otherwise, the advertiser, how will the advertiser believe what you are trying to do and whether your assumptions and your projections are realistic? The advertiser need not know what the salaries of your engineering people are or what the salaries of your marketing people are. but they certainly will want to know how you will sell to whom, what kinds of uh, rates are you charging. So those kinds of stuff we should certainly share because it's not a trade secret. Our next question is from Dhananjay Singh. He asked how to raise funds in Indian market for an e-commerce business dealing with a niche market. Sorry, I lost the question. What was that? How to raise funds in Indian market for an e-commerce business dealing with niche market? In today's market, it's not easy to raise money, whether it's niche market or a general market, particularly for e-commerce. End of the day, money is raised only on four or five fundamentals. It doesn't matter what specific sector the business is in. It is based on what kind of a team do you have, how big is the market you are going after, um, what is your unique offering, why will, in other words, why will you be better than anybody else, how capital efficient are you going to be, and how will you make money, right? These are the five uh, key questions that you need to answer, and that's how you raise money. It doesn't matter what the sector is, but uh, if you're looking at e-commerce and a niche e-commerce play, uh, it's not a it's not a good market to raise money now, primarily because uh, it is extremely hard to be able to build a business in this area. Our next question is from Vishesh. He asks, uh, "How do we start building value in the company as a startup? How do we attract advisors to our company?" 
Yeah, so how you build value and how you build advisors are two different things. Uh, when, uh, let me start off with the latter. In terms of attracting advisors, you first need to understand what kind of advisors you want, why do you want advisors, and what is your understanding of an advisor. You first need to be clear about these things. Um, and then, how much time do you expect the advisor to spend? Why should that person spend time and energy with you? Uh, what is it that you are going to do to compensate their efforts? So you have to spend time thinking about these things. After that is, okay, now I have kind of figured out what kind of person I want as an advisor. So then you go out to different, so you start activating your networks, whether it is your alumni network, whether it's industry associations like TAI, uh, use your NEN networks, use multiple networks to be able to reach out to different uh, groups of people. Uh, industry events take place, there's LinkedIn, all of that. Use your contacts and go and approach people. And there again comes the issue of selling, right? You have to sell your vision. The person must believe that they want to associate themselves with you. In terms of how do you create value? You create value by building a good business, which means it's profitable, it is growing, it has got a certain set of uh, uh, value systems, which means you know people want to be with a company. So things of that nature is what will basically create value. Our next question is from Vishal. He says, being a service company, how to test if a client is actually looking for a service or is just out to heat check? Or just out to? Heat check. Heat check. Heat check means? I'll just start. What does heat check mean? Uh, market pricing. Well, that depends on how good of a, so you have to ask a set of questions to the customer, right? Because a person who comes to you only for pricing, without you spending time with that individual to understand what exactly are they looking for, what is the nature of their problem, uh, uh, right? You have to spend time with the customer. And at the end of all of it, the customer may still not give you business. So you have to kiss very many frogs to find the princess. This question is from Saurabh. He says, uh, if, if I'm only person working for my company, how should I take it further? Why did the company is service based, such as designing? What should I invest in? So his company is service based. Yes. Is the company service based? Yes. Okay, remember one thing. Yeah, remember one thing. To grow to grow a services business, there are two vectors on which you need to operate. One is scale, the other is scope. Scale means the more people I have, the more revenues I make. Scope is what is all the nature of services I offer. So I can offer a suite of services and I can have large numbers of people, both of which will drive sales, meaning drive uh, growth in revenues. So if you want to grow it as in a services business, you will necessarily need to add people because revenue is proportional to headcount. So you have to keep that aspect in mind. Similarly, you have to look at scope. If I'm offering service A, uh, I can have from one person, I can have 10 people offering the same service. Tomorrow I have to add a new service, which is service B. And again, I'll have to grow from one to ten people. So both on the dimension of scale and scope, I'll have to grow. Our next question is from Satish. He says, I have an idea which will improve the process in retail sector. What are the first few steps that I can take to turn it into a startup idea? Yeah, so the first step is to really find out because you know all of us have ideas. The question is, what exactly does this idea do? Can you quantify it? Can you say that currently the, pro the, current, the current process has got 10 steps, it involves the following five stakeholders, it takes so much of time and it costs so much money. If you use my process, we will improve the, we will reduce the number of steps, reduce the number of stakeholders, reduce the amount of time, improve my uh, margins or reduce the cost. 
right? So you should be able to come down to a fundamental base level of granularity rather than talk and abstractions. Come down with very, very specific and you say what kind of retail? Is it general purpose retail? Is it specialized retail? Is it multi-brand retail? What kind of retail will benefit the most from this uh, idea that you have? And then you should be able to quantify it. And then once you have quantified it, then you figure out what it takes to build it. What do customers really want? Next question is from Praveen. Next question is from Praveen. He asks, what is, what is the right time to look for funding when we have prototype in hand or when we have the idea backhand? Yeah, it's a good idea to have the prototype. It's a good idea to have spoken to customers and prospects. You really have first hand market feel for what you have built. That's a good time to start talking. We have a question, last question from Vishal. We have a question, last question from Vishal. He says uh, that his customers, uh, that his customers, the questions he's asking to the customers and they are all good to buy. But at the end, they all back out. So he's asking how to ensure that which frog is the princess. <laughs> so, you know, you might have to, I don't know what he's selling and how he's selling. But, you know, uh, that's the art of selling, right? You have to go through a proper process of understanding, of qualifying who your customer is, making sure that you're not spending too much time with, uh, with all the frogs, figuring out which frog is going to be thrown out of the consideration, and therefore what are the parameters you use for evaluating whether the interest from a customer is serious and genuine, whether they actually have budgets to spend, whether the person you are talking to is indeed the right person to be talking to or is there you know someone else who actually calls the shots uh, you know all of these are very many different ways to evaluate and if you go on to the net you'll find lots of books on uh, on selling which I think will be very useful to go through. Uh, the last two questions of the day the first is by Vishesh he asks, will you get a higher valuation for the company if the company already has 350 plus customers in e-commerce space? 350 plus customers, 350 individuals or companies? Individuals. So 350 individuals? Yeah. Well. You will certainly, it, it, you know, frankly, in e-commerce, 350 is a really small number. So the question really is not whether you have 350 customers. What is important is at what rate are these customers growing daily, weekly, monthly? What percentage of them are repeat customers? Um, what is your cost of acquiring one customer? what is the value of each product that you are selling and therefore what is the ratio of your cost of customer acquisition to the value of a customer. Those are the metrics, not whether you have 350 customers. You can have 350 customers but next week if nobody comes and buys you have zero customers. Thank you, Sanjay, for that interesting session. I think that was the last question for this day. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you to all our attendees. Please do send in your feedback and suggestions at eclub at nenglobal.org. Also, if you found the session interesting, please feel free to blog or post about it. The recorded version of the webinar will be available on our website, eclub.nenonline.org by the end of this week. NEN Entrepreneur Support and Training is conducting a two-day workshop for entrepreneurs on tools for growth across India, first one being conducted on April 19th and 20th at Indore. The workshop will include panel discussion and mentoring session by experts. For more details, visit eclub.nenonline.org slash workshop schedule. 
Also join us for our next webinar on building leadership skills in the team on April 17th at 3 p.m. Thank you once again and have a nice evening. Thank you.